Bible. And there are three choices there. It used to be there were only two. Now there's three. The first one is insert symbols. I mean, you can go ahead and click it without, without penalty. Go ahead and click it. And this is how you insert symbols like copyright notices, trademarks. Um, I do believe, Lori, correct me if I'm wrong, the M dash now works as far as you can tell. Didn't you test this the last class? And yeah, M -dash last were class working. it seemed to, work, seemed to look uh, just fine to me. Yeah, you previewed in browser and it was fine? Yes. yes. All right, so it used to be if you chose M dash, it looked like a long dash, but when you published your lesson, it showed up as a hyphen, which was, of course, not what you want. It appears they fixed that. So if you do want an emphatic pause, a dash like that, that's what you would use. Uh, so if you click the second option, that's going to let you insert a variable at the insertion point. And the last option, by the way, if you wanted to have text in a caption that linked to a website, you would type the word, highlight the word, click that insert hyperlink, and type the web address where you want the learner to go. That's pretty cool. That, that's brand new in this version of Captivate, brand new. So. Uh, we're going to use that middle option there, insert variable, go ahead. Now, there are two variable types, system and user. If you go to the drop-down menu, you can verify this. You can also notice that user is not available. User variables only become available if you make them first. They don't come with a project. So this project doesn't have any user variables. We'll be making them as a group later. For now, we're talking about system variables, which are variables that Captivate gives you for free, and they basically let you put information about the project or the learner's computer in your project. For instance, the time of day for the learner, because you can say, uh, hello, uh, today's date is, and you can put the variable based on their calendar, and currently the time is, and it would put the current time in based on their clock. Now, that would depend if their clock is set properly. And if it is, they would see currently 10, 19 a.m. for Mindy based on her clock that I see in your system tray in the bottom right. Take a look at the variables drop-down menu where it says select variable. There are a tremendous number of them. And you can just scroll through them and take a look. The problem is, unless you were familiar with the variables, they, it's very difficult to tell exactly what these variables do. They, some of them have got some very cryptic names. Now, I'll bet you that Lori has investigated most of them and could tell you about them, where I've only played with a handful of them. So she truly is the variable and advanced actions guru. So I'm going to help you segregate this list a little bit. You see where it says view by all? Go to that drop-down menu and choose Movie Metadata. Now, if you go to the Variable drop-down menu, the list is significantly shorter, far less intimidating from my perspective. The variable I'd like you to select is CP Info Project Name. Basically, forget the CP, that stands for Captivate, a variable for Captivate specifically. Information from the Project Information dialog box, the project name that you typed. Now that maximum length is 15. We're going to leave it alone and press OK. Now I'd like you to move the caption up and to the left. You're going to make it wide enough and tall enough to accept a significant amount of information. Right now it's way too tiny. And uh, if you leave the variables too small, they will not automatically get bigger to accommodate overflow data. If the data doesn't fit, it'll just get cut off. I think at this point, your size isn't bad, Mindy, but it's too close to the image of the clock. So move it right and move it down by about a quarter of an inch. Oh, a quarter of an inch. You went way too far to the right. I like a little bit of a buffer, but not too much. At this point, you can make it a little bit wider and a little bit taller. You could actually get closer and closer, maybe a quarter inch from that continue button. Now. Before we test the variable, I want to test something else. So Mindy has sized her caption to absolute perfection. Mindy, I don't think you could have done any better with that. Double click inside that caption and put a period after that second dollar sign, which by the way is simply the name of the variable. 
Now, the second she types that period, I'm hoping that you all notice, like I did on her screen, that caption resized. Deselect the caption there, Mindy, and make it taller again. Double click inside the caption to take that period out. Basically, what you're doing here is simulating editorial changes of one way or another. And once again, the pesky caption got smaller. Now, if you're looking at this and thinking, well, this is good. The caption is no taller than necessary. You need not even pay attention to what I'm going to tell you now. If you're looking at this saying, I'm really getting annoyed by that, then here's what you can do to turn the feature off. Adobe says it's not a bug. It's a feature. Go to the Edit menu and bring up your preferences.